The news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a truck driver on the run after a deadly crash this morning. It happened in Atascosa County near the Bear County line. The Atascosa County Sheriff's Office posted these images on Facebook. Now, this is not the truck believed to be involved. However, deputies think the suspect vehicle is similar. In the post, the Sheriff's Office says the crash happened around 5 this morning. Deputies say a Volvo tractor or box truck was involved but left the scene. Deputies have not said what led up to this crash, but they think the suspect's vehicle is believed to have front end damage and may be missing the right front hood mirror. If you have any information regarding the crash, please contact DPS or the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office. Back here in San Antonio, new details in a shooting investigation. Police now say a woman was trying to get her child to fall asleep when she says someone shot her in the leg. According to police, the woman and her husband were driving around the northeast side early this morning trying to get their child to fall asleep. At some point, they stopped at a park and got out of their vehicle. The woman says she heard a loud sound, which she thought was fireworks, so she got back into her car, and that's when police say she felt a burning sensation and blood running down her leg. She was taken to the hospital but should be okay. There was no shooting and no weapons were found following a false report that resulted in a lockdown at Thomas Jefferson High School yesterday afternoon. But that did not stop many parents of students there from showing up at the school and showing their frustrations at a lack of information about the situation. One parent even punched out a window worried that their child was in danger. In the aftermath of the panic, Superintendent Jaime Aquino says that there needs to be more training done outside of school so that parents and families know what's expected of them. The school did put out a phone call and an email about the lockdown, and an alert was also put out on the district's website. But in future lockdown situations, school officials say they will also send out a text message. Later today on KSAT 12 News, we are going to break down how lockdowns are handled and the role everyone is expected to play in these tense situations. You may remember it as a back to the future car, but the DeLorean is now having a rebirth as an electric car maker. That innovative tech company is headquartered here in San Antonio. Their next month, they're going to be at but they will be one of the world's leaders in the spotlight when Port San Antonio is hosting an international cybersecurity summit and DeLorean CEO goes to the spotlight. Pax Massey spoke with them and explains what the summit means to the Alamo City. And this is this hidden gem in the southwest of Texas that people just don't realize exists. They have everything here. Two million people, very long automotive history and a fantastic environment for business. The CEO of DeLorean recognizes the talent, the opportunity, and the tech hub that is Port San Antonio. Next month, he's going to be speaking at the Cyber Future Summit 2022. The amount of data that we're transacting between the vehicle, the consumer, and ourselves as an OEM is just massive. During the summit at the end of October, more than a thousand leading experts from around the world, they will come together here in the Alamo City. International audience of cybersecurity professionals, but not just from uh, specific industries, from across multiple industries. We're talking transportation, healthcare and biosciences, um, defense. We are putting the world on notice of all the work being done here. It's another opportunity for us to further our reputation as a center for cyber operations, cybersecurity, and for talent development. We have educational opportunities. We have DeLorean. We have collaboration across the Alamo City, really putting San Antonio on the map. Many of these programs are among the best in the nation. Um, bringing in professionals from outside the community and seeing how we are connecting these audiences, government, industry, academia, right here on this campus is noteworthy. As for DeLorean, well, the trip back to the future, it's not too far away. On September the 30th, we're going to open up our order board and we're going to sell you reservations to our production as an NFT. And that NFT will have an avatar and you can start playing with your car well before you have the car. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. It is the time when you can literally play in the street and don't have to worry about traffic. You can ride the open road because Ciclovia is back this weekend. Sunday's event encourages residents to get out and get active through car free streets. The free event temporarily closes city streets to provide residents a safe space to exercise, explore and play. And there will also be live music and DJs, bike repair stations, food trucks and 
Loteria Games along the route. The city of San Antonio's Metro Health team will also be on site to provide no cost COVID-19 vaccines and back to school vaccines for children. And if you don't have a bike, that's OK. Attendees can join in on the fun by just walking. This time the route will run from North Main Avenue and Ashby Place all the way to North Alamo Street. The event starts at 10 o'clock Sunday morning, ends at 2 in the afternoon. You can get a closer look at the route at YMCASATX.org. And if you can't wait till February for some rodeo action, don't worry. The Comal County Fair and Rodeo is kicking off later today. It's been described as the largest county fair in Central Texas. The event begins at 5 o'clock today and ends on Sunday in New Braunfels. And admission is free for opening day today. There will also be live music each day. PC, PRCA rodeo performances will happen tomorrow, Friday and Saturday nights. And you can find all this information and more on KSAT.com. It's only September, but it's beginning to look a lot like Fiesta. Take a look. These five posters were designed by five different local artists. Now, the Fiesta Commission members are going to be voting on which one of these posters will be the official poster for Fiesta 2023. Each design shows a different idea and perspective of what Fiesta is and what it means. The official poster will be revealed on February 1st. An often overlooked community that played a huge role in our city's history now coming alive in a new space over on the east side. The Native Americans who worked and lived in our Spanish missions. They're often called San Antonio's first families. Tiffany Huertas gives us a look at what the group called American Indians in Texas at the Spanish colonial missions hopes this new center will accomplish. This right here is my grandmother and this is 1939, it's in San Antonio, and she's, the banner that she's holding is the, the Native American Voters League. Ramon Vasquez's family history is archived in the American Indians in Texas at the San Antonio Colonial Missions new campus. These are the first families, these are descendants of the first families of the settlers who built San Antonio. The new site is over 12,000 square feet near South Olive and East Commerce Street. Here, they will provide different services. Our San Antonio Fatherhood Campaign, where we'll be working with young dads, helping them um, you know, with their parenting skills, our seventh generation doula uh, birthing support services. The nonprofit will also open a store where they will sell local products by Native American artists from artwork, medicine, and clothing. This campus will also house San Antonio's first Native American gallery. This collection here uh, represents hundreds of thousands of years of artwork and craftsmanship. Cultural arts manager Manuel Davila says the gallery is filling up quickly. These all came from private collections in people's homes that they've spent like you know, spend years and years collecting. They'll be rotating exhibits that happen yearly, of course, art exhibits. Uh, we'll have a number of visiting artists come and do their curate their own shows for us. The center is opening its doors to the public in November for their first art show. Well, I think it's going to set the tone for how we look at the contributions of American Indian families, right? The first families of this city. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Fall officially starts tomorrow, but we'll be ushering it in with some record challenging heat. More on that forecast in the weekend forecast coming up. And a first on the Las Vegas Strip, a championship parade honoring the WNBA champion Las Vegas Aces. Larry Mears with more on the celebration coming up in sports. Hurricane Fiona was already a powerful storm, and now it is actually gaining strength. Meanwhile, the damage left in its wake still causing issues for people in Puerto Rico and Mother Nature not giving that island a break. Hurricane Fiona is still on the move and now even stronger. It's now a category four hurricane. The Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico and Turks and Caicos Islands all took a hit from the hurricane, but now those problems are lingering. ABC's Jay O'Brien reports that hundreds of thousands of Puerto Ricans are still without essentials like power and water. Hurricane Fiona strengthening into a powerful Category 4 storm, now marching north toward Bermuda, packing winds of 130 miles an hour and leaving a trail of destruction battering the Turks and Caicos Islands, rolling through the Dominican Republic and causing what Puerto Rico's governor described as catastrophic damage. FEMA saying it's sending hundreds of additional aid workers to the U.S. territory, including two search and rescue teams. We pre-deployed 
many FEMA resources well in advance of the storm last week to ensure that we can continue to coordinate with our partners on the ground to ensure a seamless response and recovery process. And overnight, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services declaring a public health emergency on Puerto Rico. The hurricane killing at least four people on that island. Fiona's damage surveyed from Coast Guard rescue helicopters. Entire neighborhoods are still underwater, homes uninhabitable. Crews continue rushing to restore power after more than a million Puerto Ricans were left in the dark by the storm. Hundreds of thousands are also without clean drinking water as the island braces for high temperatures today. Puerto Rican officials saying yesterday they're confident most people will see power restored soon. Officials say they're also tracking several other systems churning in the Atlantic right now, one of which is Tropical Storm Gaston, which isn't expected to hit any landmass. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. I can hear the debate already. Is it Gaston? Gaston? I don't know. You got to watch the movie. <laughs> and that'll tell you, right? Gaston. Gaston. Uh, Let's what make movie? Him uh, what was that? Beauty and the Beast? No, um, it was, was it Finding Nemo? Was that the one? I don't remember. I think it, it was, was Beauty it, and the Beast. See, I'm not up, uh, I don't know. Finding My grandkids Nemo. aren't old enough yet. So. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it is getting busy on the Atlantic. We're going to take a look at that here in just a second. The aquifer is down seven tenths of a foot to 633, even in your pollen count. We've got three today, molds, pigweed, ragweed, all low. A lot of heat around here, a lot of activity in the tropics. We've got all of it for you coming up. Take a look at this. Fresh off the line in San Antonio, it is Toyota's all-new hybrid Sequoia. Back in 2019, Toyota announced a $391 million investment in Toyota Texas, which paved the way for the Tundra and Sequoia to be built exclusively here in San Antonio. To commemorate the Sequoia's new home, Toyota Texas donated a combined $100,000 to the San Antonio River Foundation and... San Antonio Parks Foundation. Ooh, sharp looking vehicle. As long as the air conditioner works, you're okay. <laughs> well, especially toward the end of the week, right? It's we're, we're going to be pushing 100 yes. again. We will. It'll be a close call. Uh, today, we're going to be in the upper 90s. Tomorrow, probably a little bit warmer and Friday warmer yet. Uh, uh, but we'll see lower humidity levels. So it is kind of a trade off. As we go outside for you right now, we've got partly cloudy skies. Some clouds have rolled in. This could help us a little bit. Uh, instead of seeing those clear skies we were looking at earlier, right now, 88 degrees at the airport. Calm winds feels like 90. Dew point should be on its way down. It's still rather elevated, 66. You can feel that kind of humidity. But I think by the afternoon, this number drops below 60, and the air feels just a little bit drier. Still going to be hot uh, any way you look at it. And as we look at the satellite picture here, cloud cover definitely not as expansive as it was yesterday, but we are still seeing it. And here around Bear County right now, 88 degrees at Port SA. We're up to 90 in Castroville, 89 in New Braunfels, and 89 in Seguin. So you'll be seeing some 90s on the map very, very soon. Dew points, as I said, trying to drop off a little bit in the mid 60s here around San Antonio at this hour. Still some places, though, reporting dew points in the 70s. Uh, those numbers contributing to a little bit of a heat index. Feels like 90 at the airport, feels like 90 in Converse. The heat index shouldn't be too, too bad today, again, because of those falling dew points. In the dew point trend this week, uh, we'll see some fairly low dew points Thursday and Friday, which will allow those temperatures to really jump up. Humidity returns a bit over the weekend and into early next week before we're, we see a frontal boundary. Now, the timing has changed a little bit on this. Looks like this may be late Monday now, uh, but we'll drop off. Uh, the dew points and we'll see some drier air by maybe Tuesday of next week. Here is the setup. We've got a big ridge of high pressure right over top of us and it really is taking over the, for the forecast here and you can see all the showers and storms. A lot of them going up and around our ridge of high pressure. Uh, pretty good rains across parts of Nebraska this afternoon. We had some severe weather in parts of Michigan a little bit earlier. And then as we go to the tropics, well, this has really been the big story. Fiona. Uh, just a very picturesque hurricane. You can see the eye right there. When a hurricane develops an eye like that, you know that this is a strong storm. Winds are at 130 miles per hour, gusting to 160. The good news here is this has moved away from most of the islands. So the Turks and Caicos are there 
and this is out over open water. Now it will brush by Bermuda probably as a major hurricane uh, and then move north as it uh, begins to weaken. But even as it moves north into parts of Canada, it's going to combine with another storm system and this could create some big problems up there. So something to watch that would be over the weekend. Meantime, we talked about Gaston. It is a tropical storm, probably weekends, and this stays out of our open water. It's not a big deal, but we've got more waves that we are watching. The conveyor belt getting going here. 50% chance of development with a wave coming off of Africa, 30% chance with this one, and this is the system that we've got to keep close eyes on here because uh, this is going to move into the Caribbean likely strengthen some. This is the spaghetti plots and I think by the weekend and early next week this is starting to kind of take a turn to the north. The big question becomes where does it go from there? Some of the computer models do want to take this into the Gulf of Mexico. Actually most of them do but it's a question of where it goes and I think all of the Gulf needs to keep a close eye on this but particularly Florida, Louisiana over to Florida is a place that really wants to watch this closely. This could be a strong system as it moves north. We'll let you know. Meantime, summer heat is the big story for us. So we'll be up near 99 tomorrow and again on Friday near some records. There is a little area of low pressure that moves into Mexico by Saturday, throws some clouds in our direction, which means it's slightly cooler, but emphasis on slightly because it only drops temperatures into the mid 90s versus the upper 90s. Uh, we officially usher in fall tomorrow with that big time heat. 95 Monday, we've raised that temperature just a little bit and added in some small rain chances Monday evening and then drier by Tuesday, guys. Well, 91 ain't bad. It's a little better. Hmm. Isn't bad. Isn't, well, <laughs> He's or it ain't grammar. bad. Sorry. Um, bad news for a, a local youngster who was on the Cowboys, but good news for the receiver core, I guess, getting back a start. <laughs> yeah, huh? Dennis Houston uh, from Warren High School yeah. was released by the Dallas Cowboys, but I really feel like he's going to catch on with another NFL team. <laughs> that young man is really good. So what does this mean for Cowboys wide receiver Michael Gallup? Is he set to return? And in soccer, SAFC was all smiles last night, pumped up after their latest victory coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Warren High School football player Dennis Houston was waived by the Dallas Cowboys. Houston made the 53-man roster and was active in the first two games of the regular season. This move likely means the boys may be ready to activate Michael Gallup, who's been recovering from off-season ACL surgery, or they're going to activate wide receiver Jalen Tobert, who they invested a third-round draft pick on in during the off-season. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones was asked if Gallup is ready to come back. I like where Michael is physically, and I don't know if we're going to try to uh, go with him on Sunday or not. I mean, Monday. I don't know, uh, but, but uh, we'll see how this week goes. But uh, he's uh, he's really doing some good things out there, and uh, we have missed him, and it'll be good to get him back out there. Cowboys kick off on Monday night football against the Giants, except for 7.15 p.m. live right here on KSAT 12. The Houston Texans are now 0-1-1 after losing to the Denver Broncos 16-9 on Sunday. The Broncos held the Texans to a trio of field goals by Kaimi Fairbairn, one in each of the first three quarters. And for the second straight game, the Texans failed to score in the fourth frame. Wide receiver Nico Collins was asked why. Oh, man, I feel like we just need to finish in the fourth quarter. You know, it's a long game, man. Um, four quarters, that's a lot of football. Um, I feel like these last two games, man, um, haven't done that well in the fourth quarter. But I feel like it's a long season, man. Um, and we're going to improve on that for sure. Houston will play the Chicago Bears Sunday at noon. The Bears are 1-1 one and, one and favored by 2.5 points. In soccer, San Antonio FC beat Colorado Springs FC 1-0 last night at Toyota Field. PC scored the deciding goal in the 76th minute, scoring after his penalty attempt was saved, but ricocheted right back to him. SAFC moves to 21-5-4 on the season with 67 points, leading the USL championship. Incredibly proud of the mentality monsters. Uh, felt we controlled the game from start to finish. Uh, definitely in the aggressors with and without the ball. Uh, made Colorado very uncomfortable. They had to uh, resort to long balls, um, so it made it really difficult. We shut down their key players, which was, was essential in a game like this. 
Um, and again, to get three points against uh, one of the top attacking teams in the league, um, all in all a, a great day and well-deserved, well-earned three points. Jordan Farr kept his 13th clean sheet of the season, setting a new club record in the process and moving the team's home unbeaten streak to 13 matches. Becky Hammond and the Las Vegas Aces took over the Las Vegas Strip yesterday to celebrate the club's first WNBA championship. Thousands of fans flocked to the Strip to celebrate with champs. The parade started at Caesars Palace and ended at the Bellagio Fountains, where the Aces took the stage to address the crowd. I'm so thankful for y'all. I'm so thankful for my teammates. We went all day after so glad we won a chip for the city. We still go. See you all next parade. I love it. I like that. I like to go down the strip. That's that's different. It They've never cool. had that before. No. In Vegas. No. Not quite like the Riverwalk, but still pretty unique. <laughs> The NTSB wants car makers to make some changes to new vehicles. White feels that adding technology might help prevent drunk driving. And the Food and Drug Administration is admitting that it mishandled the baby formula crisis earlier this year. How the fumbles hampered response and what the agency wants to get in order to avoid something like this in the future. Today at the United Nations, President Biden issuing a harsh and direct message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. He also urged the U.N. General Assembly to unite. ABC's Rita Roy reports this comes as Putin wraps up the war, ramps up the war rather, calling up reservists and then moving to annex large portions of Ukraine. President Biden mincing no words at the U.N. General Assembly this morning. Russia has shamelessly violated the core tenets of the United Nations Charter. His speech before world leaders condemning Russian President Putin's war against Ukraine. Just today, President Putin has made overt nuclear threats against Europe and a reckless disregard for the responsibilities of the non-proliferation regime. It comes just hours after Putin addressed his country, ordering a partial mobilization as he tries to ramp up the size of his military, threatening the use of nuclear weapons, saying Moscow will respond with all the means at our disposal if Russia's territorial integrity is threatened. He moved to officially declare large areas of eastern and southern Ukraine part of Russia. It's definitely a sign that he's struggling, and we know that. He has suffered tens of thousands of casualties. Uh, he feels like he's on his back foot, particularly in that northeast area, the Donbass. He's also planning to stage referendum votes starting Friday, the U.S. slamming them as a sham. These are not the actions of a confident country. These are not acts of strength. Quite the opposite. This all comes as Putin suffers heavy battlefield losses, Ukrainian troops marching into this newly liberated village in the eastern Donbass region. President Zelensky dismissing Putin's moves as noise and thanking allies for their support. While the president mainly focused on the war in his speech today, he also addressed the climate crisis and announced funding to fight world hunger. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The Congressional Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack now set for a new hearing next week. That's according to the House Committee Chair, Betty Thompson. He says the committee has chosen a topic but is not revealing what that is right now. The committee also has not decided if they're calling live witnesses to the hearing this time. But Thompson says this will likely be the last hearing before their report is released and it'll take place on September 28th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The Food and Drug Administration is acknowledging a number of shortcomings in dealing with the baby formula shortage. That is according to a new internal review report. The report said going forward, the agency needs more staff, training, and equipment to handle emergencies like that. A top FDA official who led the review says if they're expected to do more, they need more resources. The FDA's investigation of bacterial contamination in baby formula in January ultimately resulted in a recall of many popular formula brands and forced the shutdown of a major manufacturing plant. The National Transportation Safety Board wants all new vehicles to include drunk driving detectors. It would require all new vehicles to include technology that can detect if drivers have been drinking alcohol or are otherwise impaired. The board also wants new vehicles to have speed-related technology it says could help prevent tens of thousands of fatalities 
However, there's no word from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration about how the measure is progressing. But the group reports that 32 people die of alcohol related collisions every day, more than 11,000 every year. And after months of dipping gas prices today, we're seeing an uptick in gas prices. It's only by a penny, though. Today, average prices hit $3.68. That's according to AAA. But that ends 98 consecutive days of falling pump prices, the second longest streak on record going back to 2005. A one cent rise in gas prices isn't really a big deal for most drivers, but keep an eye on it. Falling gas prices are the sole reason Americans' consumer prices have remained steady over the during the past few months. And if they keep ticking up, that could make it harder for the general government to keep inflation in check. A number of stores are frustrated by extra credit card fees, and so now they are pushing to have them lowered. Walmart, Target, and Kroger, along with convenience stores and independent grocers, all backing two bills in Congress that would do just that. The fees usually run between 1 and 3 percent of a transaction's final price, and stores often pass them on right to consumers. Last year alone, it added up to a about $138 billion, according to the Nielsen Report, a publication that uh, takes care of payment industry issues. But credit card companies are pushing back, saying the fees cover things like reward programs, banking services, and protecting merchants from fraud or consumers that don't pay their credit cards. Outside with live cameras. Today, the first day of fall, tomorrow? Tomorrow. 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 It's like, really? <laughs> I've got it circled on my Do calendar. You? Why? It's not yeah. going to feel like fall. Well, it's... At least you know it's here. Emotionally, I feel better about it. Mother Nature is just ignoring that milestone. Uh, today is the last full day of summer, if you want to look at it that way. And it, it certainly feels that way. But the first full day of fall is going to feel even hotter. So go figure. Well, let's take a look at some of the headlines here. Uh, we've had a few clouds this morning as we look at the time lapse here. And uh, what we note is that there will be lower dew points this afternoon. More sun. We're expecting mostly sunny skies. Fall equinox, as you guys pointed out, tomorrow, tomorrow evening. And in the tropics, it's getting very busy. We have several waves that we're watching that could develop into tropical systems. Meantime, right now, 88 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 66 and falling. Does still feel like it's 90 outside when you factor in that humidity and calm winds. Around the state, some big time temperatures up around Wichita Falls and Dallas. It's hot up there. 95 right now. Wichita Falls, 91. Dallas, 92. Waco, it is 91 and significantly more humid down there in Houston. Our case at 12 hour forecast. 95 by 3 p.m. We're up around 97. That's our high today. We'll call it sunny. Southeast chilly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. This evening, it'll be warm. 83 at 10 o'clock, 81 by 11 p.m. We will eventually fall into the 70s. The drier air will allow temperatures to get a little cooler tomorrow morning. But boy, does it get hot during the afternoon. We'll take another look at those temperatures and the weekend forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. San Antonio Missions opened up the playoffs last night. Highlights coming up with Larry Ramirez in sports. A surfing otter steals a board, <laughs> but it had no intention of going for a ride on it. What the creature did do instead. This one's kind of out of this world. A surfer off the coast of California confronted by an otter while he was out just trying to catch a few waves. And as CNN's GD Mose reports, she ought to be ashamed uh -oh. of what she did to this board. Nick Erickson is usually the one riding his surfboard, but when he left it empty for a moment after catching a wave off Santa Cruz, a sea otter figured it ought to be the one riding it. It climbed on and made itself at home. Nick's friends on shore couldn't believe it. No way. Nick's tactics range from the puny trying to splash the sea otter to the brave attempting to tow it toward shore. But every time he touched the board, the sea otter, possibly a pregnant sea otter, would lunge at it. Were you actually scared? A little bit, yeah. It's like a pit bull puppy in a sense. Like, <laughs> it, it, it looks cute, but you know how dangerous it can be. That's Nick's good friend, Chad, next to him. He was the one shooting the video. 
none of you guys went out to help him. He should have just swam in. <laughs> I didn't want to leave the board, though. When Nick yeah. got too close, the sea otter would dive in after him. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Nick was teased about why the sea otter was so riled up at him. You're being accused of being the one who got the otter pregnant. <laughs> yeah, that's my... That's my friends being friends, I guess. Finally, another surfer came to the rescue, managing to shove the board away from the otter. The otter then chased the rescuer, then changed its mind and started chasing Nick. I kept looking over my shoulder and it was like, it was like a scary movie. You can imagine which one. But Nick was unscathed. Was the board damaged? Yeah, it took out a couple of chunks. It did that too with its teeth. Nick may keep it unrepaired as a memento of the standoff. He might even get that sea otter tattoo he once considered. I've always had a fixation with sea otters. Yeah. And this sea otter had a fixation with your board. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. She always has great news of the weird. I looks like how his friends are just gonna sit there watching all this, uh oh, uh oh, and they don't do much. For him. <laughs> they're, they're having a good laugh. That's they're the funniest thing. Do they otters get rabid? Well, that Zena, you know, I don't know the answer mm. to that. Let's let's hope not. Something was going on. <laughs> uh, 88 degrees so far today. The average is 89, so you know we'll be above average again today. The records uh, there for you: 73, the low this morning; 68 uh, is the average low. We were uh, above that, and we'll see above average weather going into the weekend. In fact, records going down, plus another update on the tropics for you coming up. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. <laughs> I don't want to say it too loud because, you know, some people might still like the, the warmth. But Well, we are keeping an eye on the tropics. We are hopeful. Yeah. Fingers crossed that we will get something in the Gulf that'll give some rain. I don't, I don't think on. that's going to happen. I don't, because uh, what we're looking at... <laughs> Come on, man. Don't shoot me down I'm like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, what I think we may get is a, is a some sort of a hurricane. It, it could be on the stronger side. It, it's something that we've got to watch. I don't think Texas is in the crosshairs in this situation, uh, but we do need to watch it down the line. We'll get to that here in just a few minutes. That would not bring us rain. Uh, it's not really a situation we would we would hope for. We like those tropical systems that just bring us some moisture and some rain, but I don't think this is that. Uh, let's first start, though, with a look outside. We've got partly cloudy skies and uh, 88 degrees. And the dew point is at 66, feels like 90 at this hour. That dew point will continue to drop today. Here's a look at the dew points. And I think by the afternoon, this is 5 o'clock, we're seeing those dew points drop into the upper 50s. That puts us in the pleasant category. But just keep in mind, the temperatures are still going to be in the mid to upper 90s. You can see the dry air that settles in across West Texas. Dew points build a little bit by tomorrow morning, but not as high as they have been. And by tomorrow afternoon, the, the dew points really bottom out. We start to see dew points perhaps in the mid 50s. So it's going to be that dry heat. It'll make for some nice mornings, perhaps, but the afternoons are going to be awful toasty. Not much in the way of cloud cover across the state of Texas. We have some of those cumulus clouds that are building, but they're all very flat, and you know, I think that they'll scatter out a little bit more by the afternoon. Uh, 88 degrees, Salotis, 88, Boulevardi, 89 right now in Seguin, 91, one of the hot spots down there in Pleasanton, and it feels like 95 with the humidity. Heat index isn't uh, too severe today, but it will jump up a little bit through uh, the next couple of hours before those dew points fall off. So 95 degrees, 3 p.m., 97 by 4 p.m. That's our high temperature today. Same at 5 p.m. and then uh, slow to cool down this evening. 83 at 10 o'clock, 81 by 11 p.m. with light southerly winds. High temperatures this week. Well, next couple days will be right on the Cusp of 100 degrees, 99 both Thursday and Friday. That is well above average. We stay above average through Monday, and then the temperatures try to drop a little bit uh, with a frontal boundary on Tuesday, but we're still above average. It doesn't give us all that much relief. Here's why. Heat high, still over top of us. We've been talking about this for several days. It doesn't finally get dislodged until the weekend, and that keeps everything away from us. There's still some good rains out west where they need it, but it'd be nice if they could share some of that with us. Uh, another update here on Fiona, Category 4 storm. This is a massive, very strong storm. Winds are at 130 miles per hour, gusting to 160 now. 
This moves close to Bermuda as a cat four storm. Thankfully, probably just far enough away where they don't see uh, direct effects, but they certainly will feel it. And then as it moves north into parts of Canada, it weakens, yes, but it gets wrapped up in a system that's uh, moving west east, and that can make for some uh, pretty treacherous conditions there across uh, northeast Canada. Meantime, we've got Tropical Storm Gaston going and several other waves that uh, need to be watched. One coming off the coast of Africa, another one where there's a 30% chance of development, but it is this one that we've been talking about. Right now, it's still fairly disorganized, but as it crosses over into the Caribbean, this is where it will have the chance to develop further. And we think by the weekend, uh, we could be looking at a developing system on our hands. It probably takes a turn north. The latest computer models want to take it into the eastern Gulf, but I would say that even here along Texas, we still need to watch it. And certainly if you're living from New Orleans down to uh, even Miami, this is definitely a system that you've got to watch very, very closely. 99 Thursday, 99 Friday, 96 Saturday, 96 on Sunday. Partly cloudy skies this weekend. We will put in a small, small chance of rain Monday with that frontal boundary, which cools us down just slightly on Tuesday. We'll take slightly. It's yep, good. Something. <laughs> Thank you. One thing amazing, we're like getting into, I think this is the fifth week of high school football, but yes. the girls have been playing volleyball like since the end of summer. So they're really getting deep into their, uh, into their season. Aren't they? I think they have about a month left in the regular wow. season and the playoffs start for volleyball and coming up. That's what we're talking about. High school volleyball, Davenport and New Braunfels Canyon, two of the more dominant teams in the area this season and how to become a millionaire. Well, all you have to do is catch an Aaron Judge home run. I'll explain coming up. With a little more than a month left in the high school volleyball regular season, many of San Antonio's area's best teams just keep on winning. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley has more on a pair of dominant teams that were in action last night. Davenport put on a show at home in a District 27 for a clash against Canyon Lake. faced adversity once in the first set with the match tied at 19 all and they responded by ending the set on a 6-0 run and cruising from there to a convincing sweep of the Hawks 25-19, 25-7 and 25-13. We were just like, we got to get it together. We didn't really feel like we had it in our intensity. We just had to pick it up and just work hard together as a team. We really needed to talk more on the court, and that's what really helped us. Davenport is now 4-0 in district play. The Wolves are 26-4 overall this year, and they've now won nine straight games. Not bad for their second season of varsity competition. It feels great, and we're just going to keep going. We're going to try and stay undefeated throughout the whole district. We want to get first and finish out this last round and go next round undefeated. Just a few miles to the southwest, defending Class 5A regional champs, Canyon cruised past Veterans Memorial on the road in a three-set sweep. The Cougarettes look very different this year, but they're 4-0 in district, all while shouldering the pressure of wanting to go back-to-back. -back. I think we feel the pressure, but we all love it. Um, you know, the pressure is what drives us to do it again. We're definitely gaining more confidence, especially after losing people last year, but also we have people who are very, like, versatile, and everyone can really do a lot of things on the court. That's not all. In case you missed it, Brandeis took on Clark in a crucial District 28-6 day showdown at Northside Sports Gym. We have highlights from that match and more from Davenport and Canyon right now on the BGC page at KSAT.com. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. Thank you, Andrew. The San Antonio Missions open up their Texas League Southern Division Playoff Series at Frisco last night. Top of the first, Western Rivas comes up in their RBI single as the Mission strike first, one nothing. Top of the fourth, Connor Hollis sends a two-run single to center field, and the Missions lead three nothing. But the Rough Riders come back to win Game One, seven to three. Game Two is tomorrow night at the Wolf. Now the Missions need to win to force a decisive Game Three, which would be Friday night at Wolf Stadium. New York Yankees slugger Aaron Judge hit his 60th home run of the season season last night to spark a five run ninth inning rally for a 9 8 Yankees win 60 homers in a single season ties judge with Babe Ruth and now he's one homer shy of tying Roger Maris American League record single season record of 61 homers he set in 1961 and two dingers away from breaking it estimates for merch experts value the record breaking ball in the low six figures to mid seven 
figures. So talk about a money ball. Now, if you catch that record breaking one, you better get ready to fight in those stands say. because you know people are going to be coming after you for that ball. What if he does it on the road? Still. Ooh. I know, but Yankees fans probably won't be happy about that. No, not at all. <laughs> I guess that's one ball you don't throw back. No, you don't, don't throw, throw that one back. You keep that, you baby. Keep that one. <laughs> College education paid for. There you go. Maybe. <laughs> We're going to head over to SA Live. Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> Good. Okay. A lot of times my wife and I are always like, we need a new restaurant to right. go to. And there's a place, believe it or not, on the Riverwalk. No, it's not a touristy kind of place. Look at some of these dishes they are serving up. Oh, yes. We're going to give you a treat today with Domingo's. And here's the thing. This food is like elevated Mexico City street food. It would be like dining mm -hmm. in Mexico City. We're going to tell you all about that. All right. And our Jen Tobias Strusky is out at the zoo with a preview of Zoo Fest. Yes, that's right. And we're just outside of the zoo, and it's at Sunken Garden Theater, the first of its kind festival benefiting the San Antonio Zoo. And we are getting a sample of the music, but we have everything you need to know if you'd like to attend. Back to you guys. It may not feel like fall, but Stephanie Pina Frost is going to make it taste like fall. Yes. So these are some really cute, um, it's a fun treat. It's a pumpkin donut bowl and you stick a little acorn in it, you dust it with some um, chocolate frosting and some little fall leaves and it turns into your little oh acorn. acorn. I love that. All right, so we want to know, you know, with fall eventually going to be here, you know, would you rather go uh, th through a corn maze or a haunted house? Which is your favorite? Let us mm. know at SA Live KSAT and you may see your answer in the show. And, and you know, we've had barnyard animals on yep. before and, you know, you never know what's going to happen. This is from last time. <laughs> So we're going to give you a preview of the Comal County Fair that takes place all this weekend. Oh, that <laughs> video never dies. <laughs> we made it up into the 90s now. 97, the forecast high today. The record is 100, so I don't think we get there, but we'll get close. 99 Thursday and Friday near some records both of those days as well as we officially welcome fall. Uh, into the picture here. Uh, partly cloudy skies this weekend. There is a small outside chance for shower Monday as front comes through. It does cool us down slightly, slightly on Tuesday. But this is a hot, hot forecast, guys. Oh, yeah. It's back. Yeah. We're used to it. For least. a few days. Speaking of back, it's always interesting to see how the producers for SA Live find a way to sneak that goat video in there of <laughs> Mike. Always working. All right, so here's a dry mic right now as a live starts. Right now. <laughs> Go to sleep, the little baby piggy. Coming up today on SA Live, Kamal County Fair and Rodeo is going on this weekend, and there's a lot of little baby farm animals for you to pet. Is this better? Yes, it is. Plus, breakfast, dinner, and everything in between, this Riverwalk hotspot shows us how they have something for everyone. Well, don't wait for the weather. We've got great DIY fall crafts to make it feel more like the season right inside your home. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Look at the little baby jacks. Aren't they adorable? Only about three days old. Yeah. Even though. Happy Wednesday. Our fall kickoff week continues. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike oster -Hage. Oh, and I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, our, we want to know, would you rather, uh, you know, kind of go through a corn maze or a haunted house? If it was not 99 oh. degrees, well, I give you that. Uh, I was going to say, if it was not 99 quick. degrees, I would say corn maze. I think that's a little more fallish. Okay. Even though I love Halloween. Okay, haunted house all the way. You really? Know, you know that answer. I, but you know that. Any more haunted that. houses, just don't do it. I don't know why. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Stay in your corn lane. Maze. Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter which one you would. But not if it's 99. Oh, my gosh. I'm just okay. saying. <laughs> it's just okay. okay. I hear uh, a lamb in the background. Yes. Are you? <laughs> okay, well, if you're missing rodeo season, guess what? Starting today, you can bring out your inner cowboy as the Wild West once again comes back to South Texas. And Jill Bennett from the Kamau County Fair and Rodeo has brought some bar baby barnyard animals to get ready for the rodeo. Welcome, yeah. welcome. We've just got a nice little variety. Thank from you. The yes, here. these are all babies that are going to be will be in the baby barnyard. Uh, we've got a little pot baby pot-bellied pig. She finally has settled down. Um, her name is Prissy Pot. Prissy Pot. Prissy Pot. Yes, and she's she. She 
she's finally happy because I'm oh, holding her. She is finally gone to sleep. It's the grandmother touch. Pigs usually don't like to be. This is your moment. They don't like to be held. I, she lot, likes to be cuddled. Maybe she's a snuggle bug. Wrap them up a little bit. Yeah. Now, how much bigger so, is she going to get? She will not get much bigger. She uh, maybe five or six pounds, small dog mm -hmm. kind of thing. Can't overfeed them because that's when you see the really, really fat ones that have trouble walking around. Right. Yeah, you don't feed them, but just little morsels. Okay. So, okay. anyway. All and, right. and pigs are actually very clean animals, right? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are very clean animals. They they roll in the mud to keep the flies and, and the, keep cool, but they do. They are normally, they're very smart yeah. and very clean. Well, because people keep them as pets, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. right. Okay, who are we going to next? The chicks or the lamb? Because he's. Yes, one, I it, think he wants. To, yeah. He wants a little tension there. Mm -hmm. So right we here, have a little lamby pie. We have Bobo. Um, I I got him this morning from a friend of mine. Uh, she runs the historic Pfeiffer Ranch, and uh, he is a bottle baby. Uh, and he's a full blown. I can't remember what breed she told me, but anyway, he is a bottle baby, and yeah, he's on. He's a star today. So. Aww. And then will he get to be just a regular full size yes. big old sheep? Yes. Yes. Okay. He will be a normal size. He's Rambouillet. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't come up with a, with a breed, but he's okay. a Rambouillet breed. When do you usually shear a sheep the first in time the, around? In the summertime, usually when they're about a year old, because okay. they get really, really hot, and so you shear them down slick and, I mean, not all the way down right, to right, the skin. Right, right. But so he's never been sheared? Before. He's never been shorn, no. Okay. So. And that's the finest wool, the first shearing, right? Usually? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it kind of depends on really on where they've been kept. Oh, okay. So, you know, I mean, if it's good wool or bad wool or right. that kind of thing. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. We have some, some chirping we going on We have some in chirping here. baby chicks. Mm -hmm. uh, they were hatched about three days ago. <laughs> the little red one's going to sleep. Um, <laughs> I you just have your touch. It's between. because you're here. They, yeah. Baby animals always nap when you're around. Right. So Bad I have. Just falls asleep. And I, I know nothing about chicks um, other than they have uh, feathers and wings <laughs> and those two feet. You know, I mean, that is it. So uh, I am not a chicken person, but, but again, I do love the baby chicks. But again, all so. part of the baby barnyard, yes, right? Yes, we have a hundred baby chicks out there. Uh, for kids to pet on at the uh, in the baby barnyard, we have a baby chicks mm -hmm. area, so they can pet on the baby chicks. And these guys will eventually be able to take flight, not like long distances, yes. but oh yeah, in, in another day or two, they'll be able to hop out of this basket. Like, no problem. No problem. They're already they trying. <laughs> they are, and we have to keep lids on their container. Right in the in the barn at it after a couple of days so everything kicking off of course this weekend yes. take us through the weekend what can folks expect uh, tonight we start with night and old new Braunfels. the carnival opens up um, tonight as well we'll have a dj playing out there and we will present the rodeo queen and the fair queen court as well and say goodbye to our former courts and then tomorrow currently the home and heritage uh, are, is bring, are bringing in their uh, judging things and so they will be open tomorrow that we the, everybody can see what their awards are and uh, we don't have a hay show we didn't cut any hay this year it's too dry but we start with livestock shows on friday uh, the baby barnyard opens tonight as well um, let's see what else and then there's mutton busting, right? mutton busting at the rodeo on thursday friday and and Saturday and Sunday afternoon with the bull buck out. And, and great so, entertainment, And right? we have great entertainment. Um, our headliner this year is Kevin Fowler on Friday night. And then we have a county line band who is a local band made up of several of my friends on Thursday night. And we have different ones opening uh, for each of those. And so admission gets you what? Admission gets you in the, in the gate. Mm -hmm. um, it is for 12 and up. Or 12 to adults, it's $12, and then 5 to 11 ages, it's $5. Um, entertainment included? Entertainment included, yes. Okay. we yes. That's fantastic. It's and, good, and bye. all the great fair and carnival food, right? Oh, gosh, everything. Funnel cakes, oh. pork chop on a, chi uh, on a stick is Ooh. a hit. Uh, the close his ears when you say pork chop yeah, and sausage. Yeah, we'll close. Yeah. We'll close this one's ears, and when we say pork chop and sausage. <laughs> okay, he is just dead to the wolf he's, napping she, there. Yeah, he's white. Oh. I think I think she needed a nap. She was on the back of my truck coming yeah. through San Antonio. And of course, right there uh, in New Braunfels, across from the library, the public right? library at 701 Commons uh, East Commons. 
Common Street. Street, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, you can, there's the parking right there, right across as you cross the river bridge and then parking all up and down the streets that everybody opens up their yards for. Yay, yeah, all right. Well, the Comal County Fair and Rodeo starts today, goes through Sunday. And uh, for more information, just head to our website, salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live Perfect. tab. Thank you. Thank you. I was so worried You're that, welcome. that the pig was going to make so much noise in this interview and just She's slept sleeping. right through it. If she didn't smell so bad, I'd let Fritzy hold her going home. It does, guys. Kind of Oh, a pig. Anyway, first of a kind event is coming to Sunken Garden Theater, and it's all to benefit the San Antonio Zoo. Our Jen Tobias Trusty joins us at the zoo with a preview of Zoo Fest. Hey there. Hello. Yes, we're just outside of the zoo, and from country to rock to Latin bands and your favorite cover bands like Finding Friday. Everything we need to know is Hope Roth, VP of Marketing Communications at, and Sales at the Zoo. Hello, so fun! <laughs> we are so excited about Zoo Fest coming October 22nd here at Sunken Garden Theater. Mm -hmm. And Finding Friday is going to be our opening band. So exciting. You guys are great, by the way. Love it. They got me moving out here in the heat, right? I love it. So let's talk about Zoo Fest. What do people need to know? This is a first ever. So this is a first ever. And one thing to know is this is an all day music festival. It is going to have country, rock, Latin. The gates are going to open at 2 p.m. And there's going to be live music all the way up until 11 p.m. And what do people get when they purchase a Zoo Fest ticket? Well, <laughs> we have three different ticket levels and the general admission is only $40. And you actually, with every ticket, receive an admission ticket to San Antonio Zoo. So you can actually go to the zoo, come to the concert, you could even go back to the zoo and come back to the show. I so it's going to be such a fun day and it's the first time we've ever done something like this. This whole concert, Zoo Fest, and this live music, is all to benefit the animals here at San Antonio Zoo. And the distinction, we want to make sure people know that it is at Sunken Garden Theater, so yeah, we are 100%. <laughs> it is at That's Sunken the Garden trick. Theater, and again, this is a benefit concert, and our vision is to secure a future for wildlife, and we want to have fun doing it. So yes. Zoo Fest came about, and we are going to have four different bands. Our headliner is actually Josh Abbott Band. Nice. We're also going to have A.B. Quintanilla and the Cumbia All-Star. <laughs> as well as the Spin Doctors. And like I said, our opening band is Finding Friday. Finding Friday. And we have the train coming by, so let's look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so you can see how close we are to Sunken Garden Theater, the train that people can enjoy along when you come here at the zoo. And I think Finding Friday is going to play a little for us. Let's hear it. All right. And everybody's favorite band. Yes. One more time, guys. All right, again, the first ever Zoo Fest benefiting the San Antonio Zoo will be October 22nd from 2 to 11 p.m. at Sunken Garden Theater. For tickets and more information, visit sazoo.org slash zoofest. All right, guys, and stick around because we are going inside the zoo in the second half of the show because we can't forget about Zoo Boo. That's another great event happening here at the San Antonio Zoo. Back to you guys. Very nice. Yeah. Friday Friday. They always sound so good. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I love that. So, hey, back to our barnyard animals very quickly out there, the, the petting animals. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the, the baby chicks. You know, they're mm -hmm. not very expensive. They're actually kind of cheap. Uh, <laughs> yes, and you know how baby animals always get so relaxed around you? Right there. Clean up aisle five. Yep. All right, still ahead on SA Live. Thank At least it wasn't, wasn't on your shirt. Yes, yeah. it wasn't on your shirt this time. <laughs> it's another reason for locals to visit the Riverwalk. We check out some of the popular dishes at this open air restaurant with a little something for everyone. But first, it's our kick off the fall week and one of the best parts of the season is snacks. Yes, indeed, the food. We're showing you how to make some easy DIY fall treats. That's next on SA Live. <laughs> 